Moving on to a topic that I know gives students a little bit of stress and it's worth me spending a bit of time explaining how you write an ionic equation. <laughs> Before I start to discuss that, it's really important that you get a sense of which compounds are soluble and which ones are insoluble in water. I can't give you a hard and fast set of rules, but what I've got here is what I think is the best simple little table as a guide. And this will get you out of problems, I think, with most questions. We need to know this for when we deal with ionic equations. Right, so which compounds are soluble in water Anything in group one, or group one compounds, or nitrate compounds, or ammonium compounds. Okay, it's just a blanket solubility for all of those. Insoluble, well, there are degrees of soluble and insoluble. Let's try and be a bit clear about this. What is insoluble? Silver and lead chlorides. Barium and lead sulfates are insoluble in water. And generally hydroxides and generally carbonates, most of these are insoluble. Right, now, if you make a note of that table there, that's going to help you a lot when I start to develop the discussion ionic equations. Okay, so I think that simple little guide is, is quite powerful with the work coming up. Okay, so we're going to look at ionic equations. To explain what an ionic equation is very simply, it is the essential chemistry. It's what has reacted with what in terms of ions in the equation. If I write out the conventional equation to start with, I'll then look at which ions I've got there and start to make more decisions about it. Let me take a very straightforward example. Hydrochloric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide. Acid alkali gives me a salt plus water. Sodium chloride plus water. By the way, a question that students ask me quite a bit is, what is salt? How do you know what the salt is? A very simple trick here. To know what the salt is, just cover up the hydrogen in the acid formula and then put the metal in its place. So instead of hydrogen chloride, it's going to be sodium chloride. Cover up the hydrogen, put the metal in, and that is the salt. This is the most well-known salt, sodium chloride. Right, well that is the conventional equation, not the ionic equation. What I need to do now is to write out all the ions that are present in that equation. And you need to ask the, answer the question related to the table. Which of these molecules are soluble in water? Well, acids are all soluble in water. Group one, group one, and water remains as a molecule. If I write out the ions here, so I'm writing all out as separate ions. So hydrochloric acid is hydrogen ions and chloride ions. That's what I've got in the bottle of hydrochloric acid. Sodium hydroxide, alkali, has sodium ions floating around separately to hydroxide ions. Right, all these ions, they all live an independent life in the bottle. They're not joined up as molecules. These are separate in the acid, separate in the alkali, okay? Because the molecules are soluble, the formulas are soluble. So again, sodium chloride, this is brine, salt solution, has separate ions. Right, the one that could catch you out is water. Water is a covalent molecule. Water is a covalent molecule. It doesn't have ions in it. It's bolted together. The water's bolted together. Don't dismantle that, leave it alone. Okay, so if you look at this now, that's my kind of pan view of all the ions and the molecule here. Now, a lot of this is just irrelevant material that hasn't actually reacted. So I would ask students, which of these ions haven't done anything, haven't done anything? If you look at this, the chloride ion there is there and it's floating around over there. No involvement in this at all. The sodium ion sat there, sat there, hasn't done anything at all. Now we're down to the essential chemistry now. So what has actually reacted? Hydrogen ions have reacted with hydroxide ions. This has reacted with that to form a molecule of water. So we've stripped the equation down to the essential chemistry. What reacted with what? The rest of it was bits of furniture which haven't done anything. And we get rid of those because they're not part of the actual chemical reaction. So this is my chemical ionic equation for the neutralization. Okay, let me just take another example. These are all really well known and, and worth discussing. Um, if I take a carbonate, sodium carbonate, and react that with hydrochloric acid, then it forms sodium chloride 
plus water plus carbon dioxide. Okay, now the equation's not balanced, so there's two hydrogens there. I'm going to need two there. Um, I'm going to need two sodiums, so a two there. Okay, there's two chlorines there, two chlorines there. And if we look at that, that's now fine. That, that equation is a balanced conventional equation. Okay, just a reminder, an acid plus a salt gives you, sorry, an acid plus a carbonate gives you a salt, water, and CO2. An acid plus a metal carbonate gives you a salt, water, and carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so it's worth remembering these, the, the form of these important equations. Right, so my next job is, now I've got my balanced equation, I need to write out all the ions. So sodium, group one, two sodium ions, carbonate ions, CO3 two minus, two hydrogen ions, plus two chloride ions. Okay, those are independent in that solution. These ions are independent in the acid solution there. Okay, so I'm writing my list out. Two sodium ions, plus two chloride ions, okay. Completely separate ions floating around in water. H2O covalent molecules bolted together. Carbon dioxide covalent molecules bolted together. Don't try and break those up. Students say, what do I do with the water? What do I do with the CO2? There's no ions there. They're covalent non-metal compounds. Leave them alone, okay? Just leave them as they are. So H2O plus CO2 gas. Okay, so we're looking for the superfluous ions. What well, hasn't actually done anything? If we look at the equation now, we can see that sodium, it was there at the beginning, there at the end. It's just a passenger, isn't it? It hasn't actually done anything. If we look at um, the chloride ions, there at the beginning, there at the end, get rid of those. So I've stripped it down now to the essential chemistry, the essential ions and molecules that have taken part in the reaction. So if I summarize, two hydrogen ions react with a carbonate ion to form H2O and CO2 gas. So all this complication all resolves down, it boils down to something quite simple because most of this was clutter, it was there at the beginning, there at the end. I sometimes say to students, it's a bit like one of those snowstorms in a bubble, you know, those little gif gifts you can buy. So it's just floating around, it was there at the beginning, it's there at the end, it hasn't done anything, so let's just delete it from the equation. So everything left here now has actually done something that's changed into something different in the products. The reactants and the products are different. If you start having the same thing appearing both sides, you need to delete it. Okay, so that was the second example. I'm just going to do one more to finish with. Okay, just to round off this little revision topic on ionic equations, let me just take one more example. I'm going to take magnesium chloride solution and silver nitrate solution. Group two compounds, they tend to be fairly, group two chlorides tend to be fairly soluble. Um, silver nitrate, any nitrate is soluble. Right, so looking at the products, Conventional equation, we swap the ions, and if you look at this, silver could combine with chloride, magnesium could combine with nitrate. The question to the student will be, which one will be insoluble? The silver chloride or the magnesium nitrate? Which one will form a precipitate? A precipitate is an insoluble solid. Okay, and if you look back to that table we had at the beginning, you'll see that silver chloride will form. Silver chloride forms as an insoluble solid. And the other material is magnesium nitrate. Magnesium has two plus ions. Nitrate has NO3 minus ions. So the formula needs to be NO3 twice. Right, a little bit of balancing up there. So there's two nitrates there. I'm going to need a two there. Gives me the two nitrates. I've now got two silvers and I need two silvers there. There's two chlorides and two chlorides there. So a moment's reflection, you'll see that is now the balanced chemical equation. Right, let me just recap on what I said about this. I've got a precipitate, silver chloride precipitate. Students say to me, what is a precipitate? How do you know when it forms? If you put aqueous dissolved ions together, if you can pair two of them up, which are insoluble, it will form as a gunge in the tube. Right, as soon as silver ions encounter chloride ions, if you look back to the table, silver chloride was insoluble. They're just like 
Two bar magnets, as soon as they find each other, they lock together. They form an insoluble solid. They don't dissolve in water. So that's why I've got S there, okay? Now, my point being, don't try and write silver chloride as separate ions. They are bolted together. They are a precipitate, okay? Right, now let's try and put down our list of mobile aqueous ions that we've got now. So look at this. Aqueous magnesium chloride, that means the magnesium ions and the two chloride ions are independent. Two silver ions plus a nitrate ion, two nitrate ions. Just get rid of the words there. Okay, so these are all separate aqueous ions. The precipitate, leave it alone, it's joined together. Okay, over here, I've got an aqueous solution. So I've got magnesium ions, Mg2+. Plus and I've got two nitrate ions, NO3 minus. Just check that's right. Oh, I made a little mistake there. That should be negative there. Right, so that's my you know, list of ions and solids in the equation. I now got to go through that and strip out what we call the spectator ions, the ions which haven't taken any part in the reaction. The ions which appear at the beginning and the end are called spectator ions. Okay, so we can see that the magnesium ion hasn't done anything at all. No change for the magnesium. The chloride ion has now become part of the silver chloride, so I can't delete that. The nitrate appears there and appears over there, so I'll strip that out. So let's summarize what we've got happening. I've got two silver ions plus two chloride ions forming two silver chloride. Your chemistry teacher wouldn't be very happy if you just left it like that, because we can write it a bit more elegantly by getting rid of the twos. So silver ions react with chloride ions to form silver chloride. Okay, so can you see how from all this complexity at the top and all this array of ions and solids here, it all reduces down to this essential chemistry where we've removed the spectator ions which haven't taken part. So um, that's my final result there. Okay, and a quick check is, if you've done this correctly, check that the charge on both sides um, balances out. There's no charge on this side and plus and minus there, they cancel out. That's always a quick double check. Just check the charge on both sides. Okay, so I hope that makes it clear about uh, how you sort out ionic equations. You need to know which things are soluble and insoluble. Okay, and things like water and CO2 and precipitates, do not write those as separate ions. They are not separate ions. Okay, so you leave water carbon dioxide and any solid precipitate, you leave them as they are. Okay, thank you.